I'm Stephen Concanon, and welcome to Fencing Ireland Sits Down With, a new limited series where I have the pleasure of sitting down with some of the biggest names in Irish fencing to chat about their international fencing experience. Today, I'm talking to Nuno McGarity, Treasurer of the European Fencing Confederation, or EFC, and President of the EFC Medical Commission. Make sure to stay with us to the end of our chat, where I'll ask Nuno about her favourite way to score a point. Nuno, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Stephen. It's, it's great to be here. It's great that we can do this indoors and neither of us have to, to brave the weather outside at the moment. Oh, uh, I, I prefer to be able to go out. <laughs> okay. um, well, now that we have you, um, tell, us, tell us about how you first got involved in fencing. Well, I think at about the age of 17, I read a small ad in the newspaper, Fence and Keep Fit, Beginner's Welcome. So I toddled along to Sal Duffy and really thoroughly enjoyed learning to fence. And I did fairly well, fairly quickly. And uh, with the result that in 1963, I, I went to live in France and I trained there for a year. Mm -hmm. And while I was there, went to Budapest to the Junior World Championships with the rest of the Irish team and carried on, went, went to, oh, before that, we went to Ghent. I'm, I'm getting the years mixed up. Mm -hmm. In 1963, the first Irish team went to the Junior World Championships and that was in in Ghent in Belgium, mm -hmm. uh, followed by Budapest and then followed the following year by the World Championships in Paris. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the main extent of my actual fencing performance internationally. No, 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 that's pretty good. And it's interesting to hear that some of those are still the biggest cities for fencing today when you look at oh, the big yeah. competitions yeah. on the international calendar. Mm. Um, did you play any other sports when you were growing up? Yeah, I played hockey and tennis and swimming, but none of those got me like the fencing did. Mm. And, and was there anything about fencing that was so enjoyable? Uh, well, it was nice to be able to beat your opponent. I think that's the universal. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Plus yeah. also uh, the friends you make. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been fencing since 1960-whatever. And, you know, I still have friends that I met in the early days of fencing. Yeah. 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 No, it's very it's really good for that, all right. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but not many people uh, on, the, on the fencing circuit or coming into the sport today would know you for your activities on the piece. Um, a lot of them would have known you as being an integral part of the fencing administration, both in Ireland and, uh -huh. and, and across Europe. Um, mm -hmm. How is it that you got involved in the administration side of things? Well, believe it or not, at the age of about 21, I was elected secretary of the Irish Amateur Fencing Federation. Yeah. Okay. And I did that job for, I think maybe two years. Mm -hmm. And I, I pulled back out of admin at that stage. And then I got married and moved away from Dublin and really didn't do, didn't really have much to do with fencing apart from with uh, a few, a few of my good friends. Mm -hmm. And I came back to fencing then uh, many years later after 1987 when my husband died of motor neuron disease. Mm -hmm. So uh i became involved in the admin then yeah about 1988 mm -hmm. yeah okay um well i have to say um i've i found any time that i've interacted with um the administration side of things the corrosion of workload that one has to get through and i'm familiar that you get through in particular mm. is quite extraordinary mm. um, You've had several roles um, uh, over the time on the board. Um, you've even been the Irish team manager at, at times. Yes, yeah, I've done that quite a bit. Hmm. Um, over the years, I've acted 
as team manager with various uh, junior, especially junior teams, mm -hmm. and have been oh, so I made lots and lots of contacts all over Europe mm -hmm. during those days. So, and then when Siobhan Byrne came along, I acted more or less as her mentor and traveled a fair bit with her and enjoyed that time very much, ending up as, as team manager at the Beijing Olympics, which was an amazing experience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. so tell us, what, what does that role involve? Well, the team manager bit involves booking hotels, coordinating transport, liaising with parents, uh, coaches mm -hmm. and fencers and then when we're at the t at the the venue uh, supporting the fencers on the piece and general dog's body and that's that's about it yeah i think uh, i think you're underselling yourself slightly there <laughs> and i know from my own personal experience when i've had some um some equipment difficulties you've been there and been a uh, pretty invaluable to getting me on the piece so yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah um you also sit on the the board of the european fencing confederation um, yeah what exactly is the function of the efc well the efc was founded in 1991 uh, really to represent the interests of european fencing um Obviously, Europe is the the strongest uh, fencing wise of all the the continents, and I think it was felt at the time that we weren't getting a proper crack at the whip. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, uh, it was founded in 1991. Then time marched on, and there was a general feeling that there had to be a gender equality. So in 2002, I was approached um, because up to then, all of the, the members of the executive of the EFC were men. Okay. So I was approached in 2002, would I stand for election? Mm -hmm. So I did. And at the, at the Congress in, uh, in Moscow, I was elected. So uh, that lasted until 2009. Mm -hmm. Just I was a regular member of the, the, the executive committee. And then in 2009, there was a bit of a coup and <laughs> we were all, most of us lost our seats on the board. So we sat it out anyway for four years. And then in 2013, I was reelected and I'm still there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at that time in 2013, I was appointed treasurer. Um, so that's, that's the history of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, it involves kind of attending uh, executive meetings, which are usually held in conju conjunction with, uh, with Champion, European Championships, junior, mm -hmm. under 23 seniors. But of course, nowadays, these meetings happen like this one. Mm -hmm. Though we use teams. Okay. But anyway, uh, so, and as president of the, each member of the executive has, has, a, has a particular uh, responsibility. Okay. Now, obviously, I'm treasurer, but also, I, I, um, I'm president of the medical commission, mm -hmm. which really isn't very onerous. <laughs> it just involves um, looking after the uh, the members of the medical commission and making sure that they get uh, a chance to act as a delegate for the, the championships during the year. So I organized the rotation of the various uh, members of the commission to act as me medical delegate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's, 
that's about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And and, and what do, what work is the EFC doing at the moment with the current pandemic? Well, at the moment there are a few things going on. Uh, first of all, some years ago, uh, Frantisek Gianda, our former president, had initiated um, a refereeing uh, uh, initiative whereby um, at all our cadet circuit competitions, the, there is a member of the refereeing commission will take part and will advise the young referees who are refereeing at the cir cadet circuit, will help them with their work. So as a carry on from that, they now they appoint, at the end of each year, they appoint certain members of those young referees as uh, continental sea referees and then they have the opportunity to to do the FIE exam. However, in this moment, because there's no refereeing going on on the beast, um, we have started an initiative where we're having virtual uh, seminars with, with promising sea uh, referees who um, who will be, you know, going for the exams whenever they are available. And that has been working extremely well. They have been uh, concentrating mainly for, at the beginning on the sabre because they felt that that was, uh, that was the one, the, the weapon which needed the help most. Yeah. I think you'd probably agree. Yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah, I definitely would. Um, it can be tough sometimes. Obviously, sports evolve over time, um, mm. but it sometimes feels that some of the smaller nations may be a little bit behind the curve on mm. what the, the latest referees are, are, are calling. Mm. So yeah, absolutely. The more the more training that can be done, and the more clarity that mm. can be given as as the different trends would be really really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so if, if there's anyone uh, out there listening to this who wants to try and get onto something like that, what, what should they do? Well, the first thing that a referee, uh, a young referee has to do is to, to learn his rules, his or her rules, back to front and inside out. Mm -hmm. And uh, then in order to become a sea referee, you need to have been acting as referee at, uh, for over a period of two years, okay. going to cadet circuit competitions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that is expensive. Yeah, I think there may be a way that the Irish Federation can help if there is somebody mm -hmm. uh, interested in progressing. But certainly, they we would encourage them very much. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, you have to you have to put in the work, mm -hmm. and get get observed by the EFC observer, and get you have to get three good notes out of five, okay, uh, in order to progress. Um, and when you say three notes out of five, I mean, yeah. is that kind of five competitions? Five competitions. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Good to know. Yeah. Um, and so thinking about all of the various competitions that you've been at, either from ju junior cadet or, or for seniors, are there any particular moments that stand out? Well, um, the first one was um, when Siobhan Byrne qualified mm -hmm. in Istanbul for the Beijing Olympics. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. Yeah. You know, it was... It was something I'd never experienced before, mm -hmm. so that was that was terrific. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's that. I'd say we we talked to Siobhan briefly, and yeah, absolutely sounds like an amazing experience to go mm. through to be in the room for that. And um, such heightened emotions at, at times yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, thinking about fencing, uh, actually on on piece, if you could go back and give your younger self some advice, what do you think that would be? Believe in yourself. Okay. Yeah. I think 
I think I always, during my fencing career, felt that, you know, I wasn't good enough. Okay. But in actual fact, um, I think if I believed in myself more, mm -hmm. I would have pushed myself more. Yeah, no, yeah. Absolutely. yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, was there any particular style of fencer that you liked or disliked fencing against? Left-handers. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a common it's a common issue, all yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, no, that was the main thing. Okay, with yeah, me, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, were there any um, either from your own fencing career or from seeing others over the years? Um, is there any opponents or particular fencers that stand out to you as as being that you admire? Yeah, well, my hero was Pavel Kolobkov. Okay. I think he was just amazing mm -hmm. from Russia. Epe, men, uh, both Olympic champion and world champion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And quite a few years ago, when he was the Olympic champion, he and some of his uh, team members actually came to Ireland mm -hmm. and uh, we had a training camp for a week and it was just fantastic to see the kids fed. My son Bernard, who's now 37, you know, uh, at the age of seven or eight, you know, fencing against these guys. Yeah. It was just, it was just wonderful. Yeah, no, it is. It's really good when we can get those experiences. And actually, now that you mention it, that's not the, that's not the first time we've had such caliber of fencers come over for training camps. Um, mm -hmm. How is it that they come about? Well, that particular one was because uh, John Toomey mm -hmm. and Michael O'Brien, who were both um, trying to get to the Barcelona Olympics, uh, they had befriended uh, some of the Russian team. Okay. And it was through their uh, intervention that they suggested they come. It was all sponsored by Kellogg's. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, it's yeah. very good. Yeah, it's great to have that kind of support at times. Yeah. Um, thinking about um, again, just actually when you were on piece yeah. as opposed to watching others on piece. Mm. What was your favourite way of scoring a point? Oh, taking the blade. Okay. That was um, it. I didn't have a very big repertoire. Not and like, not like the youngsters have today. <laughs> <laughs> and and what was it about taking the blade that made it so special? I just I just felt sure that I I was definitely going to get the point if I could, you know. Yeah. No, it's it's something that in sabre sometimes you have to turn to the ref. So it is good to know when yeah. you do that. Yeah. No, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, listen, Nula, thanks so much again for joining us today. Um, That's it's been great chatting to you. It really has um, to hear about both fencing on the piece and, and also some of the admin that comes alongside it. Um, mm. I'd also like to say a special thank you to Colin Flynn for research and editing and to Derva Foley uh, for, her, for her instrumental help in creating this series. Thanks mm -hmm. to, to all of our viewers. If you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe to Fencing Ireland. Don't forget, you can also find Fencing Ireland on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or fencingireland.net. Goodbye.